Are you a leader in customer success, pre-sales, professional services, support? Do you work behind the scenes and roll up your sleeves to make sure that customers are happy? Renew. Then this is for you. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Getting it done. Services, success, and software. We'll talk with the pros that have been in the trenches, getting service teams off the ground, launching new types of groups to service customers, or running agencies that don't have a product attached to it. For the pros, by the pros. This is the GSD Podcast, and this is your host, Jeff Kushmerick. All right, so we're good. So Dana, thanks for joining me. So everybody, I'm here with Dana Souza. And um, so quick note, I had not met Dana before. We were on, I was on a, there's a couple Slack CS, customer success communities. And you had posted something about an interview. You do these breakfast clubs, right? Like, um, yeah. <laughs> and it was on CS ops. And I'm like, so just totally being transparent here. I feel like I knew nothing about CS ops my whole life. And now- and now I'm reading quotes on LinkedIn where people are like, that needs to be my first hire before I hire any CS people. And I'm like, okay, I need to kind of get up to speed here. And so I reached out to Dana and which is really great because we're both some lifers that did a lot of this when there was no instruction manual and, uh, <laughs> and going you know. from there. So Dana, introduce yourself. How you doing? Everything's Hi. good. Hi. I'm good. Uh, yeah, my name is Dana Souza. I am um, CEO and CCO of oh. Customer Everything, and uh, and then also Dana Souza Customer Solution. So I help um, CS career newbies breaking into the space, into the space, climbers trying to you know get that next uh, promotion and help them on the job, do their job the best they can, and then what I call CS crushers which are those people trying to build CS from the ground up. So uh, yep. anyway, excited to be here. Oh, and I was named, named a top 100 CS yes. strategist. Yes. I am really proud of that. Let me tell you. Uh, that's, it, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, congrats on that for you. That's awesome. Thank you. And, uh, Thank furthermore, you, highlights that you're the person for me to chat with about here. So, yeah. So there's a lots of different areas we go down and, and we chatted about some of the things that could um, really help out people. Because remember our, our core audience is here. You talked about it with CS Everything is maybe some people here who aren't exactly been living and breathing CS for the last God knows how many years. Yeah. <laughs> and um, want to get up to speed fast or also a lot of people I know um, and some that listen here maybe they were running a full department and then they got CS popped into it. Like they were running professional services oh, and yeah. job or support. And now they're like, Hey, mm -hmm. can you take over the whole thing now? Or they got promoted and now they're like, you know, C level and they're running the whole group. So they're, it's sort of a, Hey, what do I need to know about this? And, and things like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so that's, so, so let's get into some of your, so when I first started talking with Dana, she was just kind of talking about like something was needed and she just kind of had to create it out of thin air, which is just awesome. And, and now all the stuff's out there, everything, but like, um, so I think it was, was it at uh, Planet CS? I'm trying to think of the one before that. At, uh, oh, oh, Macro. Macro, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely that one. Yeah. Yeah. So at Omacro, um, we realized that we were going to have to onboard a, a, a lot of customers in a really, really short amount of time. Yeah. And I was having to onboard uh, people multiple times because you get a whole company, right? And you had yeah. to onboard every, all those people and it was becoming really unruly. And so um, <clears throat> I had a directive from the CEO to, uh, you know, just build this, you know, um, education platform, you know, yeah. to be able to help streamline the onboarding process. And I called it 
uh, Omacra University, and we were in the music product space. So nice. I had these, uh, I had these little um, gifts and stuff of people with guitars, you know. And they, it was this whole gamification where it was like, I would say. What I ended up doing is I created Omacra University. It was a way to onboard a lot of people. So we had to create a ton of videos to tell them, okay, the first step, do these things, right? And then I would check in on them. You know, I'd get a little ping saying, okay, they did this one part of it. Um, then I would ping them and say, hey, did you finish that first part? I looked in your account. Everything seems good. You know, you ready to move on to the next? They said yes, yeah. right? So it was like building profiles, and it was about inviting everyone from their network because it was a product sharing network. Yeah. So then I created another program called Share the Love, and that was where we created a bunch of templated uh, Word documents Right. that they could email to 200 of their manufacturers or retailers or service reps or anything like that and just blast them yeah. with, you know, joining this, uh, joining Omacro because that's where they're sharing all of their product information. Sure. So then, you know, there was that, then there was like uploading their products, all of those sorts of things. So this is, this that is was crazy, by the way. I just want to jump before you went even further yeah. because there, there's there's multi-million dollar companies out there building platforms that that do this now right like this is yeah, that's true just, yes, I built it. It. I, yeah. yeah i built it out of the crm we use zoho <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> i know yeah. we, we use zoho and i built that full automation uh through through, through zoho which oh my is god great yeah we're talking about onboarding ramping people up um, checking where they are so that they can move along. So eventually, like mm -hmm. in today's terminology, so they're getting fast time to value and making sure yep. that they're trained up and everything. Yeah, and then yeah. you went through the whole influencers and champions, which I still haven't seen like a great way of doing. I mean, I just might not know of, but like of, of, of an onboarding platform that also helps you now get, you know, all these other people into the program that, that, you know, I call them influencers and champions. You see these a lot in, um, you know, I, I was working with a company and they did um, uh, large, you know, they were converting large freight fleets over to an app. So instead of like, yeah, I know that route now it doesn't work that way anymore. You got to do what the app's telling you. And because they were working like early mornings and there wasn't like a centralized location they had to use an influencer program like this of getting like champions up to speed. And we're talking about like also oh, like yeah. posters in the break room, like stuff like that. Like <laughs> it's the same concept, right? It's like, you know, get on board, use this thing. And yeah, that, that's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, just kind of this uh, guided self-help. Um, it was about as close to a tech touch model that we could get at that time. And, um, and it really helped. I mean, you know, um, yeah, fast time to value to have to, I think I have it on my resume, but there was like um, a, a really huge increase. And in terms of um, uh, adoption, it was like a 900% increase in uh in adoption of the platform by by doing just that so we had um you know and then there was also <clears throat> omacro clinics and stuff where i would schedule big group calls to onboard people yep. um and so that would be like maybe more like a, a mid-touch uh yeah. motion and it really just depended <clears throat> you know on the company if uh they were <clears throat> weren't really spending much money then it would be more of the the tech touch or if they were like a brand you know like mm -hmm. big brands yep. like uh Schecter guitars or qsc or fender then we get you know we would roll out the red carpet and do oh, whatever yeah. the heck they, they wanted yeah, absolutely now was was there a big because the 900 percent is like a massive improvement that would get you hired anywhere but uh was there was there a um was that a problem beforehand or was this something where you just said Hey, this would make things better, or you, or yeah, there wasn't a there wasn't a problem. You know, my my CEO was really uh, somebody who saw the writing on the walls, and he knew that we were going to scale quickly, especially with the Share the Love program. Yeah. And so um, he wanted to make sure that we preemptively took care of uh, what ended up having 
the ha having been an issue, which was, yeah. you know, an influx of people and having to try and get them all on board. Because when we got, you know, um, Bender and Roland and all those people, oh my gosh, they have so many yeah. uh, retailers and service centers and all of that distribution and stuff like that. So uh, it, it ended up being needed, but we hadn't even really uh, scaled yet. Yeah. We just preemptively did it and then scaled, which is kind of cool. I didn't know. That's awesome. And was this SaaS or was it pre-SaaS or was it like a... <clears throat> no, it was SaaS. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, then I went to uh, Planet DDS and there, you know, we didn't have any kind of like standardized anything when I came on board. I was the first hire as the director. And so uh, the CEO there gave me the first directive of finding out what the, how, how are, how is everybody onboarded, you know, from the time in, you know, from pre-sales mm -hmm. all the way to, you know, a, adoption and retention. And they were in this really high growth phase yeah. um, of the business because they had just bought the business from a different owner. And so, you know, they had, you know, angel investors to make happy and all of that. So yeah, I just went out there and I just started interviewing the, the sales people and the yeah. onboarding folks and the support and just documenting on Word, you know, in, yeah. in Word documents, you know, how it is that we're, we are onboarding these customers and providing a process to make sure that we um, optimize that. Yeah. And then, um, and then there were some other things we used to Tango also. So yeah. I was able to create some automation in there too. Um, oh, I know it was partners. So mm -hmm. I was really in charge of growing us through our partner program. And so there was, you know, standard operating procedures for how to, um, you know, engage with them. But what is known as like you know, standard I'm, I'm, operating I'm, procedures are, is now CS Ops. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, we'll get into that one second. I'm just curious on the partner stuff. Was it, because um, I, I see usually two things here. It's, it's getting partners up to speed on how to um, use and interact the product, or then it's also getting partners up to speed so they can basically be like a reseller and then they're onboarding people as well too. Which was it? Was it one or both of those aspects of the partnership? Uh, yeah. Well, we had uh, we had one where uh, it was a, a BI tool that we had white labeled, okay. and so that was a big seller. So yeah. I was really focused on growth through this tool that we had, yeah. and then there were others where it wasn't white label, but there was like um, a particular type of agreement where. Um, you there was like a, a shared rev cost and mm -hmm. so I developed a way to kind of prove out that model where I had done this um, ringless campaign with them mm -hmm. and found um, a healthcare company that was uh, a, a dental office actually that was interested in proving out the model and uh, and we ran that and they got you know a huge influx of new clients through this program and then they became customers so there are a lot of a lot of different things back then that I had no idea was CS ops or customer success right. I'm just doing stuff and I didn't know that there was a name for it exactly <laughs> we were talking about this before we started hitting record but there were just and I'm so glad you mentioned pre-sales through retention because that's how I view everything it starts in pre-sales and it, and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't end but you know you got to focus on hopefully all it doesn't end that's right exactly <laughs> <laughs> um, where, where back in the day, it was just doing all of that and just making sure that you, the salespeople, you help them sell it. And then you made sure that they got onboarded in, in live and they got value out of the product. And then making sure that, um, and regardless, this is even pre SaaS, it just became really accelerated with SaaS, but making sure that they liked the product and everything like that. It was, and it was a lot easier to renew back in the day, especially if you were like on their servers and they, it was just a huge pain in the butt to, to replace it. And now yeah. once SaaS came around, it's like, we need to do all this other stuff because people can just say, I'm going to go put my credit card in somewhere else and use that product or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's true, right? Cause I, I worked at uh, IFS, they were going through a digital transformation from on-prem to SaaS and yep. managed cloud also for those yep. people that kind of, you know, needed the best of both, both worlds. 
so yeah, there's a lot of digital transformation going on, uh, you know, to get away from on-prem, but yeah. you're right. I mean, it does absolutely make it easier for people to leave. Although with enterprise software, not so much because there's such right. an integration to all the rest of your business. You still yeah. are kind of like not stuck, uh, but they absolutely oh. still could leave because it's not hardware, you know? A hundred percent. And I don't know about you because, you know, we we, talk, we have some of our customers have the same profile, but it's when they start selling into the enterprise that they realize they kind of really need to up their game in terms of like their pre-sales. What does yeah. that onboarding experience look like? If they're going to be doing integrations, like you just said, because yeah, once you integrate SaaS products, it's like, that's, that's not something you want to go back and swap out in a year later or something like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so one of, one of the other things we were talking about, and it gets into that, that CS ops <laughs> aspect is, is that like, and we, you didn't call it, I didn't call it that, but it was just going through the usage and going through the numbers and mm. making sure, kind of like knowing what yeah. that health score was and everything. Can you just, because yeah. remember a lot of, you know, if you're a lot of people listening here, might not have ops, but they know that they need it. And what were some of the things that you were doing to make sure that you at least had that view of the customer that you know you needed to have? Yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, when I worked at Dun & Bradstreet, it was a, a data data and analytics company. And uh, so I, I needed, it turned out, and it, it was actually hard to get data out of there. They didn't make that available to the CSMs yeah. <clears throat> much, which is understandable, right? Because data is power. That's what they sold. Yeah. Um, but uh, I had a client that was up for renewal and the salesperson actually was the one that would be in charge of selling it. And I was there to support him. Yep. And uh, I worked with an account manager and we thought, okay, so this company isn't even utilizing like 25% of their licenses. So they're going to downgrade majorly or they might just cancel. So we have to try and figure something out. And we brainstormed and we came up with the idea of interviewing the users. So I had to pull data from places. I had to start asking everybody, how can I pull this data? Where can I yeah. see this? Yeah. You know, and, and, the, and the numbers and the information for the users because I wanted to interview them. And so I did, you know, I had to slice and dice the data in Excel, you know, old oh, school, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and try and figure out, you know, I needed like three segments of customers. I needed the, the kind of the champions, right, the super users. Yep. and ask them questions. Then I needed the people that kind of logged in sometimes. Then I needed the people that never logged in and yep. some that, you know, did a lot in the beginning and then weren't doing Stayed as away. much. Yep. <laughs> so I created a standardized set of 10 questions to determine what the problem was and uh, how we could, um, you know, mitigate the, the risk of them churning. And I learned that it was really just a lack of training and awareness. That was really all wow. it was. Yeah. So when we went in for the renewal conversation, uh, me and the salesperson went in and I had it, I had this great PowerPoint with like the globe with like yeah. actual quotes from people in like Denmark and yeah. India, right? It made it really yeah, super yeah. fancy and fun and interesting. And he was just, the client was glued to the screen and was like, this is such great information. And I said, this is what we recommend this customized training program, you know, and then we also have this kind of self-help portal, all of this. And he said, let's do it. He said, I want to do it globally. And so we ended up getting, I don't know, it was like a $300,000 uh, training package or wow. something to be able to train them globally. So we had to deal with time zones and all of yeah, that. Yeah. It was it's going to be a whole customized training program. So that was really exciting. Yeah. yeah. So there's a little bit of that CSR. Pre days too. So it was super hard to arrange those things. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> now throwing times back and forth. By the way, this is the one podcast where I wish we did the audio pod, a uh, video podcast, because you know you're you're as animated as I am with the hands. So and yeah, for and sure. Happened, so um, so that this is so it's funny because these are all super high level things, right? That was going through and doing a full on user profiling. Um, you had your segments going on there. Yeah not in yeah. some people they just do that like that's a job like segmenting and tiering right yeah <laughs> and then you went in and did some um some like root cause analysis of 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 low usage 
and then yeah. you found out what those were and then you guys were able to pivot and then instead of taking a loss you got an upgrade out of that again yeah. so so what yeah. i'm getting out of this is a 900 percent upgrade and that first thing that you talked about and then it's oh, master university around here yeah so <laughs> so hire dana actually put on the ah thanks jeff <laughs> awesome <laughs> So let's let's turn this into um, you know helping out some of my core customers. Like if they're you know you know we talked again talked a little bit about this beforehand. There's lots of great thought leaders out there, and they talk about concepts like hiring CS ops first and these big platforms to use and things like that. A lot of the people that I work with and talk with, um, Series A, Series B. Um, CS is a little bit of an afterthought. I, I think now, actually, I think a lot of the boards uh, and investors are really making people focus on this earlier, which is great. Um, yeah, yeah. But people are like, okay, we've got two CSMs. What do we do next? Right. And you know, the CSMs are, they're doing Zendesk tickets, they're onboarding people, they're trying to renew people, they're training people, and, and just doing all the stuff that you just talked about and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do we get, a group like that, you know, if you're, if somebody was to say like, this is my problem and I, I want more insight or usage and some of the concepts that you talked about, how would you go about in addressing some of that? Um, you mean like kind of dig in a little bit more on how I did with the, um, yeah, uh, no, I, I was thinking a little bit when we were talking about like, um, Hey, instead of hiring a dedicated CS ops person, this is oh. how, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. You, I mean, I, I have heard from CS ops people that, you know, you should be doing CS ops like number one higher, but yeah. I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't agree with that. I, when I, but I have actually, I've, I've interviewed um, some people about CS ops and there was a, a misunderstanding because that when they say a higher CS ops, they're not necessarily talking about a dedicated CS ops person. Oh. They're talking about having somebody who is still there optimizing processes, trying to do um, uh, some automation moves, um, trying to be able to do some reporting mm -hmm. and uh, analytics to find out ways to kind of optimize the, the customer life cycle. Yeah. <clears throat> and your CSM can do that. I mean, shoot, you could have an account manager do that. If it's like your yeah. first it's a, if it's the first time that you're hiring someone, that C, whoever you end up having as a CSM can do all of that, and you can train them to do all of it. When I was doing it, I didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of, you know, was, you know, flying by the seat of my pants, yeah. and I had figured it out. And you know, and any anybody can. Um, you know, there's so much out there. You know, Gainsight platforms, other CS platforms out there that can help with that. CRMs that you can yeah. use. And you just have that as part of the job that yeah. the customer success professional does because you, you're not having a scale yet, right? You're still in the, uh, you, know, um, you know, the uh, iterating phase yeah. really to try well, and find the best way. way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a yeah. great way of looking at it. Um, yeah. So let's, um, I think this is a good, probably a good, segue into the thing that you're just super passionate about um which is uh customer everything <laughs> and yeah. in 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 these skills that people need what are people are they typically out of college are they transitioning from a different gig or you yeah know? so they're they're transitioning right they're pivoting there's so many people after uh 9-11 or excuse me 9-11 ah. no sorry covid oh yeah. god it's like we've had one catastrophe after another. Like, I know. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, since COVID, people are, you know, reinventing themselves. They're realizing that they're in yeah. jobs, maybe that they're not really happy in. And a lot of people love customer success. It, there's a real human-centered approach to it yeah. that I think speaks to a lot of different people. So um, the newbies out there that are looking to pivot into customer success from account management or sales, um, are people I'm really, I, I care about deeply because I was one of those people who, it's not that I don't have CS experience, I do, but back, 
in the day, I didn't have a college degree for the first 10 years of my career. So it was really, really hard to get a job. And I got really creative on how to do it. And so I wanted to be able to share that. And so there was this whole um, process that I went through with my team on being able to help them because it turns out I love the CS movies the most, but God, you know, they're pivoting careers. They don't have a lot of money that, right. uh, you know, the, the big boys have, you know, the corporations yeah. and the startups. Yeah. So I needed something that was a tech touch model, you know, um, and create some sort of motion that allowed me to really help them without having to be involved in the day to day. And so um, I used a platform uh, called Podia. I used templates, you know, and I created this whole learn your ABCs process, uh, 10 steps to landing your dream CS job. And then um, we had to, you know, I worked with Christina. She is like my CS ops person. Yep. And, you know, she and I worked together to um, implement the software, uh, to configure it the way that we needed it to be configured. And, and we're right now learning like what the platform can do, the reporting we can get so that we can make sure that all these people that have signed up stay in, in the, in the, um, uh, in the membership, you know, that they don't, uh, they don't leave, like they don't download all the templates because I'm making them available all at once. Oh yeah. It probably wasn't the best business decision, but, <laughs> but I just care, I care about them, you know, yeah, yeah. so now I have to work really hard to keep them. And so we're thinking of a lot of different risk mitigation strategies, you know, to keep them on. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to start a biweekly call where we have someone who has the same passion as I do, Mm -hmm. who's going to be doing almost like the, uh, like the GGR office hours, right? She's just there to moderate and keep the conversation going so that it's like, I'm calling it newbies helping newbies. Five weeks awesome. call, they can yeah. get together and, and help themselves. So a couple of different strategies like that, but uh, that's really the tech touch model that we've yeah. been creating and it's had a lot of great success. I, I love it because you're using, you know, it's like a mirror in a mirror looking at each other because you're using a CS platform and CS um, sort of learnings to get <laughs> these people onto the platforms to learn how to do their CS stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then they stay yeah. on CS stuff and everything. So yeah, yeah I, I yeah. think that the, um, you know, having them create these bonds is what's gonna, gonna be really just awesome for them because yeah. it's, it's in those conversations. I've been in those GGR and I do feel for some of the, the, the newbies who would pop in there and then you get some grizzled veteran like me is like, nah, they're not gonna listen to you. And like, you know, so it's nice. <laughs> to- <laughs> <laughs> so a place where they You're cannot- hardly a gr- grizzled. Come on, <laughs> Ener- energetic and lively professional. Yeah. Yeah, these are these are laugh lines. I, I swear. So, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's I, that's there's a lot of stuff we just packed in in a short amount of time there. So it's just like dil- diluting. So what's next for for you? Like, what's your? Are you putting together your your 2022 plan and the the big things for you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so um, I have plans for um, the second level um, of being able to help uh, CS career newbies, and it's going to be more, um, would you say, uh, more detailed yep. templates, a lot more of them, along with like really detailed instructions for all of them. And, um, and then the third tier will actually include you know, um, coaching, a coach, coaching session with me. Yep. <clears throat> and so that'll be kind of my whole tech touch model, th- really three tiers that they yeah. can be able to buy into in that kind of tech touch model. And then that will allow me to focus more on my climbers and my crushers. Yeah. And then <clears throat> next with my, my uh, climbers is actually to do um, not a tech touch model, but more of a um, guided self-help, so to speak. They're really kind of my, my mid-touch client. So guided self-help through that same uh, platform to be able to give them the templates that they need, but get um, really hands-on one-to-one instruction with me. And then that allows me to then, you know, streamline those whole, whole processes. I'm not having to reinvent the wheel with those clients. Yep. I already have a standardized process. And then I'm allowed then to really focus on my, um, 
my crushers, you know, the people yeah. that are needing to build CS from the ground up, customized programs. And that's really right. where, you know, the money is. Yeah, <laughs> so no, I got I got to read the market, you know. No, that's great. It's and it's I just am so <laughs> like blown away because I'm it's just hearing how you're implementing concepts like high tech, low touch, mid touch, you know, and those things for this thing for a CS community, which is, is just awesome. But like, um, cause, you, cause you can tell, like if, if you, if you've got one of those custom things and then, you know, as so you do it three times over, it's like, oh, maybe this can be folded into a regular template that people use and stuff like yep. that. So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you can't do that until you've had all of the experiences and gone through right. all of that, you know? So uh, luckily I've been able to leverage, you know, seven plus years of CS knowledge along with my sales, um, you know, my, my sales career experience, which is a yeah. way, way too long to even mention. <laughs> oh, well, the, the, the best salespeople were the ones that had that sort of empathy, right? That, and that's yeah. where, as we know, the yeah. empaths are, uh, as we said, as I said, when we first met, the huggers are in CS. And uh, yeah. so that's where that, you know, if you want the customers to do well, like that's where that, that, that's the one thing when people ask, like, what's the quality you're always looking for? It's like, you need the empathy, like, and yeah. like anything else. And so yeah. that, that's great. So, yeah. well, awesome. Well, Dana, just, uh, we'll hold on for a quick second so we can do some recap re after this, sure. but um, thanks so much for joining. Um, wow. Where can people find out about what's the website for, um, for <laughs> everything? Yeah. So uh, you go to customereverything.com that redirects you to uh, Dana Sosa customer solutions, but shortly I'm going to be redirecting it to my uh, customer everything club. Um, cool. But you can also get to the customer everything club through um, uh, let's see, cebclub.podia.com. Yeah, 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 I've got I've got it on uh, on Podia, or you could go to danasoza.com dot com too, and I've got lots of uh, lots of goodies, free eBooks and stuff like that to help people. So um, yeah, they can reach out anytime. So email awesome. right on my website. They can reach yeah. out. That's great. That's awesome. And uh, and I'll put your LinkedIn uh, profile. Hopefully, you won't get too overwhelmed by connection requests. But uh, it's always hey, a good I would love it. I would love it. I love being connected. I'm a community junkie, so I'm That's all awesome. about it. That's awesome. That's great. Well, Dan, uh, just hold on after this, and uh, thanks again. And um, we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye.